Get your news shined up. Grab a stick of newsy news. The news is gonna news you. Got some news. Read it out. Square Roots news is gonna make you scream and shout. Hot gaming news. It's what we're giving you. Cause Jim is sick and that's at a concert. Vanessa's mom. She's not feeling great either. I'm Vanessa. I am here. It's true what they say about Vanessa's mom, but don't worry. She is just recovering from a minor surgery. She's doing well, considering. But, uh, you know, I'm I'm playing nurse. Mm-hmm. I got my little nurse hat on, Johnny. You see it? Mm-hmm. It's white. It's got a little red cross on it. It's very nice. I got my, my little uh, nurse uh, uniform. And I look like a candy striper. I have a big... Uh, syringe, mm-hmm. uh, but it's uh, one of those like vodka shot syringes. So you just squeeze it and the jello comes out. You ever had one of those? Uh, yes, once at a bear event. I saw them at a spooky Halloween event. Oh, I haven't been drunk in like years, I think. I don't know if I've ever been drunk. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I'm such a huge lightweight. I've never really had more than, I would say, three drinks in one night. And that's an extreme amount for me. Mm-hmm. So I guess it it's not the amount you drink, though. It's just how it impacts the person, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, uh, in that sense, I've definitely been drunk. One time, I threw up after I drank some things, but I didn't feel that drunk. I feel like throwing up drunk is pretty drunk. I guess it is, but it wasn't like immediate. It's like I went home, I went to bed, then I woke up and I felt uncomfortable in my stomach, and then I went and I threw up. Is that how it works? Yes. Oh, then that's what happened to me, Mm -hmm. and that's why I don't like to drink red wine very much anymore, because, you know, tannin on the going in and tannin on the going out. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Tannin? Yeah, that's what... The the point is, listeners, Mm -hmm. I'm just too drunk, I mean tired, Uh to do a full episode. Right. So, uh, I thought, originally I kind of thought it'd be funny for me to start doing a one-hander episode, and then have Vanessa walk in and say we're not recording this week, but but uh, let's do this version instead. Yeah, I don't want to be the villain in this narrative, you know? Yeah. Even though I am. Like, it could have been a two-hander mm-hmm. if I had agreed to do it. Mm-hmm. But I refuse. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you got stuff so going on. So if that makes me a villain... And I guess I'm a villain, mm-hmm. but I want to be like a Lady Dimitrescu kind of villain, you know, like the internet will be like, yes, queen. Dice's hot character that? of the year. Yeah, I want to be the hot character of the year villain. We'll put you on a hook and be like, I see you, Ethan Winters. She puts people on hooks? I think she put him on a hook. I haven't played that game. Oh, I thought you did. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to spoil wow. anything. Wow. Now I know there's hooks and she's yeah. a bad guy, not the hero That's of true. the game. Mm, yeah. I guess I ruined the whole thing. No, wait. You watched Jim's stream of it the same as I did. I'm I sure you did. I watched like 10 seconds of it, but I didn't want it to get spoiled. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Well, I guess I've proved that I am the villain by. My villainous act of spoiling the hooks mm-hmm. in Resident Evil 8 Village. Mm-hmm. 8 Village. Do you want to call it 8? Yeah. yeah, it's 8. Resident Evil 8 yeah. Village. Originally, it was going to be Revelations 3, but then they liked it so much, they made it like a mainline game. Because, you know, the Revelations spin off very... series. Mm, no. Oh. I don't know anything about that. They're the ones that are more like classics. Or, that, like they sort of made a spinoff series that were more like the original games, like more classic puzzle oriented, less combat, spookier, less action movie. 
That's what the Revelation series is all about. Sounds like something I might enjoy, maybe. They still have a lot of combat, but yeah. Yeah, they're fun. So Speaking of things you'll enjoy, uh that's why we're doing a very special Johnny and Vanessa gaming news. Everyone's going to love it, except for that one person who left a review on iTunes saying they don't listen to the episodes that's just me and Johnny. Really? Yeah. Someone left a review on iTunes saying that? Yeah. Was it Matt? I don't think so, (laughs) but he does not listen to the episodes that are just... You and me, so it could have been. Hmm. Um, This particular reviewer said that when it is just you and I, we tend to go off on tangents. What? No. Now, I don't know about you. Like, Mm -mm. we stick to, like, to the, to the, the letter of the podcast. Absolutely. Not since Magnum P.I. first aired on CBS. Yeah. Let's talk about that, John. Well, you know my mom really likes that Blue Blood show with Tom Selleck? Oh, does she? But I, I've heard, like, it's conservative propaganda. I don't think I've ever watched it, but Tom Selleck is someone who I associate with conservatives. Hmm. I don't know if you I know, should let I my mom him... watch that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should take away the Blue Bud channel. I think if you have parental controls on your TV, just block CBS. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're parental controls. <laughs> yeah, to control your parents' <laughs> exactly. content. Exactly. Yeah, I get you know, When Tom Selleck was on Friends, I found him surprisingly charming. He's, he's I think a that was my guy. first major Tom Selleck exposure. You know, he was up for the role of Indiana Jones. I've heard that. Which which Indiana Jones movie do you think is your favorite? Obviously, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, okay. Um, here's the thing about that. Mm. I really like The Last Crusade. Yeah. And I also really like Return of the Jedi. I like, te- However, I like Temple of Doom a lot. And I know I shouldn't because it has so many problems. No. Johnny, that's the one you absolutely cannot like. I mean, I thought my confession was bad because objectively, Raiders is just the superior movie. Mm -hmm. Like, Empire is superior to Return of the Jedi, but I'm like, you know, but that's how I feel about them. Mm -hmm. And it's not anything to be ashamed of. But you, sir, you have something to be ashamed of. What? I'm not ashamed of liking... Okay, I guess I am a little ashamed of liking Temple of Doom, but that's only because of the racist parts. Is it only because of the racist parts, or is it also because of the insulting uh, portrayal of the female lead in that film? She's she's my favorite female lead. Wow. I can't believe that between Marion, mm-hmm. the woman who had an underaged affair with Indiana Jones... <laughs> And Elsa, the literal Nazi, you would choose this other woman. Kate Capshaw? Yeah. That's great. Sorry, just uh, getting some things here from my shelf just to uh, spice up this episode. Oh, okay. Show and tell is a great thing for any podcast. Yeah, yeah the audio um, medium. The audio medium. So I'm Let's just here you. to say that... Uh, <laughs> I think Temple of Doom is great. I, you know, I have no problem with the ethnic caricatures. Johnny has a little uh, action figure of Watto, mm-hmm. the, um, I guess, mechanic slash slaver mm-hmm. from Phantom I'm Menace. I'm somewhat problematic in several different ways, but my nose looks like an uncircumcised penis. It certainly does. I'm disappointed that he does not have his hat. Which is, of course, inspired by no real hats that any group wears. He's also a one-winged angel. Oh, he is missing a wing. Yeah. What do you do with that other wing, John? I don't know. It's probably in my mom's house somewhere. Like the uh, um, the Samuel L. Jackson figure is somewhere in my mom's house, too. But I do have, there's always a bigger fish. It's Liam Neeson. Oh. It's Liam Neeson, the original Taken Jedi? Yeah, yeah. I have a, a particular set of skills. Skills like lightsaber, mm-hmm. use force, mm-hmm. 
has a Padawan. I have problematic views. And my bottom half will be a spider one day. Oh, it's um Darth Maul, mm-hmm. who did, I believe, in the Clone Wars cartoon, become a spider. A robo-spider. That's a cartoon I've never seen, the Clone Wars, mm. but I'm aware of it. My, uh, did I tell you that Johnny's mom has been bugging Johnny to finish watching Mandalorian and Boba Fett and then start spoiling all of Boba Fett and Mandalorian for me? Oh, no, <laughs> that's the worst. Johnny's mom's a big Star Wars nerd. I think I've talked about that before. I don't know that I knew quite that about it, but I feel like that warrants a trip to the new Star Wars LARP hotel for sure. Four. Let's take Johnny's mom. Weren't you saying that was four thousand U.S. dollars for like a night? That's or a, a weekend? little bit low. Um, it's you know between four and six thousand dollars per person per uh, week. Uh, per two days, which is how long the experience lasts. Uh, I think you get. I said one night or two nights. I'm not. I think it's two nights. It's like a cruise, essentially. Mm. You get there in the afternoon or the first day. Mm-hmm. You do a little LARPing. Are there romanceable NPCs? There ought to be for that yeah. price, right? Like, I should like, be. Sli- you know those I'm two saying? beefy boy Grimorian guards that were apparently uh-huh. in Boba Fett? I should be able to romance them. Yeah, and I want to take the, like, flamboyant Imperial officer. Who probably doesn't like women, but you know what? For six thousand dollars, you can find a way, yeah, son. That's the red, he- the redheaded one. They do have a redheaded, uh, flamboyant imperial officer character in this hotel. Oh, uh, it is not Dom Hall Gleason. Okay, uh, I think that was a little bit outside of their pay range, but it kind of is. I mean, you know yeah, I for mean? for six thousand, you should be getting a lot of the B tier cast. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd also I'd also take um like a date with Porkins. It, not not uh, the actual actor because he's passed away, but like yeah. a Porkins. Yeah, like a Porkins type, type character. Yeah. I'm not saying that Disney employees should be forced to be sex workers. No, but if they want to be, I'm just saying that if they want to be, like, why not make it a fully immersive experience? <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah i got a little bit obsessed with this thing uh and so i watched a few youtube videos about someone's experience and mm-hmm. saw the food it looked middling i would say wait was the there thing about... blue milk there is blue milk there's okay. also green milk oh. um it you know like a cruise it kind of has food available all the time. Mm-hmm. It has five or six major characters, I would say, that you could interact with. Mm-hmm. Um, what what has... food have you seen in Star Wars? Like, what food can you definitely say is in Star Wars? Okay, I have seen that bread that Ray eats okay. that yep. expands. Mm-hmm. I have seen the cracker and or ration that yoda ate when he took it from luke skywalker and he was making a soup so there's the yoda soup right there's yoda soup Mm -hmm. uh i think in one of the reboot movies she eats something that looks like um a tapioca or like a a bubble tea bubble kind of thing uh stormtroopers uh, we've seen stormtroopers. We have seen roast porg. Mm-hmm. Chewy did roast a porg. That's right. Uh, does it? Well, only does the Ewoks Anakin eat float... stormtroopers. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't Anakin float like an apple around or something for Padme? Mm-hmm. You like, know, I've Padme. I've only seen Attack of the Clones twice, and I f- interesting. I saw it both time, two or three times in theaters. I think I was trying to convince myself it was good. Yeah. And then I was just like, no, this is, it's not the worst. I still think it's the best of the prequel movies, but it's still bad. I agree. Uh, I would say that the only good part is Ian McDermott, because I'm a huge stan for him. Steve Stan. Uh, But even he could not salvage Rise of Skywalker. 
Well, I feel like he was the problem with Rise of Skywalker. He, I don't think that his performance was a problem. Yeah. I think that the presence of the character was a problem. If for some reason, the Emperor has returned. <laughs> Somehow Palpatine has returned. Well, John, you'd know all about that if you had been a real fan and logged on to Fortnite to hear the Palpatine transmission. You're right. Uh, I have played one game of Fortnite, and it was not during that time. I have never played Fortnite, and I did not know that it involved building forts until it had been out for like six years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That That is a part of it. So, hot gaming news do you have any hot gaming news this week uh yeah i'd like to talk about the games that you can play on the galactic star cruiser Ooh, okay um games are a major component of this experience uh including lightsaber training uh Mm -hmm. which involves using your lightsaber to interact with a light beam that is coming from the wall uh there is a sort of defend the ship kind of thing where you can uh, shoot asteroids or incoming ships. Mm-hmm. You can manipulate the ship's shields to block uh, incoming projectiles. Mm-hmm. And you can also do something where you like match button patterns to help with engineering or some such. Ooh. There's a whole engineering room with a ton of mini games where you like flip levers and uh, sort of make like a light path. Is there a know, tower like of have... Hanoi? <laughs> There's not a tower of Hanoi, but very close, very similar kind of concepts. Wow. Um, so do you think if we saved up $24,000, our listeners would want to hear us go do a whole weekend, all four of us at Star Wars land? I think that we should absolutely do that. Um, The rooms will comfortably fit all of us. There is a queen-size bed for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is a bed that comes out of the wall that I guess Jim can sleep on. And then you and Matt can have the bunk beds. Oh! I think you'd fit comfortably into the bunk bed, actually. That's true. I don't think, well, yeah, Jim's the tallest, so I guess he needs the Murphy bed. Yeah, it's, again, like, not going to be probably as long as the queen-size bed, but obviously I get that. So there's just no, like, there's no reason to debate that or discuss it. Yeah, of course. Um, And I think that actually with the four of us in a room, the per-person cost Mm. would be only around uh, $1,500 a person. Wow. That's six grand. That's not uh, yeah, bad at but all. I mean, I mean compared yeah. to twenty four thousand that I thought we'd have to budget. Yeah, well, I think that like the more people you bring, the mm-hmm. the more it kind of knocks off. There are some add ons, like building a lightsaber is an additional two hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> I feel like that's nickel and dime in a little bit. Building a droid is an additional hundred dollars. Uh, food is included. However, drinks are uh, not. So if you want like an alcoholic drink. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we um, all know you need at least three of those to get drunk. You need at least three of those to get drunk. Um, and they're Disney drinks. So maybe four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we have this whole fantastic experience. And uh, you take your smartphone and that also interacts with you. In a lot of different ways. You get messages from the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, You get to choose one of three separate storylines to go on. And can I sext Porkins or the Gamorrean cards? Unfortunately, it looks like you have sort of a dialogue tree kind of thing. You know, like they send you something and you have to choose. But when you're, you know, doing your improv acting with the the actors that they have on the ship you can do whatever you want i feel like there's it's not westworld there are limits there do seem to be limits i'm guessing and i'm not you know an insider i don't know this for sure but i imagine that the cast members are not allowed to go to your quarters yeah it's gonna have cruise rules yeah and 
insofar as like romancing someone out in the open, there are a lot of children around. Well, that it tends and, not to be quite so romantic. And like these are unless they are consenting, you don't want to hit on. Well, that's staff. another thing. You should never hit on your waiter, your barista, or unless your larper. Cru- okay, I've hit on waiters before when they hit on me. Well, that's different because that's, you know, subverting the power dynamic mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, they have a duty to be nice and kind to you. Although I think that we need to relax that a little bit in the case of creepers, you know, mm-hmm. like be chill managers. Um, but yes, unfortunately, you would actually probably be making these people very uncomfortable if you yes. went hard. So so them. please note that my Gamorian and Porkins jokes are jokes I do not plan on sexually harassing. When I go on this incredibly expensive thing, I still that does not entitle me to sexually harass these staff members. I don't know why yeah. that review says we don't keep on we've been talking about the hot gaming news of this Star Wars LARPing game very consistently. I mean it's the hottest game in the uh in the star system mm-hmm. i guess you want to say mm-hmm. um uh, and it it's canonically set between the uh the eighth and the ninth movie oh okay so right before uh the emperor reappears for some reason yeah <laughs> palpatine has <laughs> somehow palpatine has returned maybe uh maybe you're involved in that in like one of the storylines maybe you are the reason that palpatine returns Ooh, i could be an imperial agent that would be cool i i want to be chiss you can be an imperial agent um i just want to shout i'm the spy at some point <laughs> what was that for? my was, favorite was the... iconic star wars line. was that what the your red-haired dumb Gleason. Yeah, that was my red haired Dom Gleason. Um and he did when when he's helping the characters escape the Imperial ship, he does go, I'm the spy. Well, you know, you only get one chance to really enjoy the reveal, so I understand. Yeah, and it's it's good um it's good script work to just have the reveal be the character announce who they are Mm -hmm. and he's like i'm dom reginald gleason Mm yeah i'm dom reginald gleason and i'm the spy (laughs) and then uh uh, jj abrams like okay dom um that wasn't the line and you remember your character has a different name than you (laughs) in this film (laughs) i was uh working on a play once and the characters were going around this table talking about what they're grateful for being like and you know i'm grateful for this and then one character used her name to be like and i you know Susie porkins am grateful for this and that but she used her actual actor name oh by accident oops it was pretty funny i don't know if anyone even noticed though it was a matinee, and people were probably just like, chill. I sent you a picture of the Star Cruiser's fake Dom Hall Gleason. It's not great. No. But. Yeah. But, you know. It's a good hat. I like that the set looks pretty good. Got getting Oh, it looks uh, great. KOTOR vibes from the set. Yeah, I mean, the set looks great. Mm-hmm. Uh, for an additional surcharge, you can have your picture taken by, like, professional photographers around the ship. So mm-hmm. it really looks like you're in this, like, super cool, keen Star Wars place. Mm-hmm. I don't um, like how there's people who seem to be dressed in Earth clothes, though. Yeah, some guests seem to, like, dress up mm-hmm. and really get into it. Some of them are just going to be wearing their like Mickey Mouse shirts. Yeah, yeah. Some of them, some of them are like wearing like that. the The lady in the foreground there it looks like she's wearing some kind of futuristic suit, the blue light blue yeah. suit. And there's a kid dressed like uh, Ray, sort of in the middle of the photo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's a better uh, picture of like the big, um, 
the big like main space so you can kind of see what they're working with oh i will say it looks in some ways a little bit more star trek than star wars to me it's a very chic and sleek and white well i think the the blue lighting looks like like jj abrams star trek i think mm-hmm. uh but otherwise yeah it's pretty good I, I think that that I, I like the look of this space a lot, and I think I'd have fun wearing. I, I want to wear those big, tall leather boots that everyone's got in those movies. Oh, that would be cool. Like those thigh high. That there's someone. I don't know if she's a cast member or just a a, a visitor, but she's got like those big leather boots. Yeah, you can definitely get those. Mm-hmm. Um, you're allowed uh to wear whatever kind of costume you want when you're in the hotel. Mm -hmm. There are more specific rules for the theme parks themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, Part of this experience is you do get into the back of a flatbed truck, um, but it's made to look like a shuttle pod. Okay. And they take you to the Star Wars portion of the Hollywood Studios Park, and you have adventures in the park. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's like your shore excursion. That, that, uh... Imperial officer looks like he's 20, maybe. Yes. <laughs> they are all essentially very young, um, with a couple of exceptions. And I would say, you know, here's the thing. The footage I saw was from like their very first kind of now we're open. We're having these bloggers come and stuff. People were nervous. Mm hmm. Some performers have more experience with improv than others, and I would say that it shows. Mm -hmm. Like, you've seen that footage of that one uh, Maleficent, right? Doing (laughs) just sassing on Peter Pan, and Mm -hmm. yeah, some of them are real good. Yeah, or the um, there's a very famous Gaston. in the parks Mm -hmm. who are supposed to be very good. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, it's, it's a, I guess that's all I have to say about it really until we go do it, Mm -hmm. which I think we absolutely should. (laughs) Um, Definitely not a waste of incredible amounts of money. (laughs) Not a waste of incredible amounts of money. A great, um, a great spend that our patrons would love to have us use their <laughs> Patreon money for, mm-hmm. um, because that's that's what they want. That's why they keep subscribing, Square Roots to get great content like this. And um, why do you keep oh, posting the same picture of that twenty-year-old uh, Imperial officer? You just to post it two um, more times. I just <laughs> I did not post it two more times. Yes, you did. Oh no. <laughs> It only looks like once. For me. <laughs> um, I guess I I love him. I guess so. Is that the fake Dom Reginald Gleason? That's the fake Dom Reginald Gleason. Uh, he was good. He I'm the, the spy. <laughs> I'm the spy. <laughs> Oh, Jim uh, says, imagine spending $10,000 to go to an amusement park to be belittled by an Empire officer. (laughs) Why are you trying to turn me on (laughs) while I'm recording? (laughs) So, listeners, my cat, does. she likes it when I'm playing video games because I'm on the couch or I'm on the the carpet and I can pet her. But if I'm at my desk... I can't pet her. And she starts getting upset. So that's why when I'm recording, sometimes you'll hear a little cat meowing because she doesn't like me being at my computer. Uh, That's a little behind the scenes Square Roots info. Now, how about Johnny's hot gaming news? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Johnny's hot. And also, we, we need to have a little Elden Ring talk. Oh, or should we save that for the bonus? Uh, I have some things I'd like to say that maybe is better said here than on the bonus episode. But first, I'm going to talk about my stuff. So, uh, I don't know if everyone's aware, 
Friday was Gran Turismo 7 day. That's the, right. The first new Gran Turismo f- main series game in nine years. Not including sport, which sucked. Is everyone excited for oh, car yes. driving uh, I love, excitement? I love cars. I love car driving excitement. I did notice the other day, Johnny, that in our um, drive that we use to store important documents and things for the show, mm-hmm. you had posted just three pictures of cars, and you never mentioned anything about them to any of us. They're just in there. I put them in the wrong folder is what happened there. Okay. I, dr- I thought I was dragging them to my personal Google Drive. They're cars. For, I mean, it was uh, pictures I took from Gran Turismo 6 because I was sort of oh, playing Gran okay. Turismo 6 in order to be excited for Gran Turismo 7. Uh, so so tell, me your, tell me your experiences with Gran Turismo 7. First of all, what are you playing it on? I'm playing it on my new PlayStation 5. Ooh, how'd you get that? When'd you get that? I got that this week. Uh, I managed to get it from doing one of those PS5 restock Twitters, uh, a Canadian one, and I managed to just get it in time for Gran Turismo 7. I was very excited. So this is the first PlayStation 5 game I've played. That controller rumbles a lot. It's like it all over the place. Yeah, I was playing a game uh, just today, which we'll get into later, and it gives a slight rumble when you go through tall grass. Ooh. Yeah, this one's like rumble, like it rumbles when you change gears, like it does like a click click. It does a rumble when you pass over like cement seams on a highway. It does a rumble when the engine's revving up close to the red line. It's just rumbling all the time. And like the brake pedals can feel different and stuff. Like it's kind of a little harder to brake a little bit. Mm, mm-hmm. It's interesting. I don't know. I Like I think I'm so used to not having any haptic feedback with that sort of stuff that it's very disconcerting. But I just, you know, it's my new system, new controller, but I might turn it off. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Does it utilize the sort of... um? tension thing in the PlayStation controller. Yeah, for braking it does. Which is interesting. So it does feel sort Mm -hmm. of like stomping on a a brake pedal. It's like a little bit mushy and then it gets firmer. It's interesting. Uh, The game looks really pretty. It's definitely the prettiest game I've seen. Uh, At times it is very gorgeous. And uh, unfortunately my favorite thing to do is time trials on all the tracks. The game does lock tracks behind the progression system. So, and I think it's like really locked all the original tracks, like the Gran Turismo. Basically when Gran Turismo one came out, almost all the tracks were made up fake tracks. Uh, it, and they've always had the same track since. And like, you so you know, so you know them from PlayStation One days, and it's really cool to see how they've like changed with technology and made these like PS One early graphics tracks now look realistic. But they're all locked behind progression systems, so I haven't got to see any of them yet. I'm a little I don't know. I don't think that's great. Hmm, I just want to play yeah, like kind of I just bought this game to play those tracks, and I'm pro- I'm gonna have to go through like the story mode in order to get them. But it's interesting. Do they like build up different things around the track? Like time has gone by. No, the story modes like this. Oh, you mean like uh, over the years of the games? Uh huh. Uh no, they just sort of like it. Sort of shows what the graphics are like for each generation. It's like you know trying to make it the prettiest possible. And so, like if if you go through the way the tracks look over the years, it's really cool to see how technology's improved. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, so the single player, well, first of all, the game starts off with a 15 minute unskippable video. The first six minutes or so are the credits with like a montage of film from the beginning of automotive history through to today. Uh, with like, I, I put a little snippet of it on the square roots, uh, chat because, You know, like it's got really maudlin piano music and it's fine. Like, you know, hey, Mm -hmm. I don't mind sitting through some credits because these people made a game series I really love. So that's fine. 
but then it has another five minutes of just like pre-rendered game footage with rock and roll music, like really bad. <laughs> and it's like this I'd rather be playing the game than watching this not even gameplay. What is why would you put this in and, and it doesn't even have credits over it. It's just like this is the cool look at these cars sliding around the track. Yeah. Like they're trying to pump you up to play the game that you already paid for. Yeah, I just want to play the game. The game is literally insane. The game is is bonkers bananas cuckoo. You like there's new digitized photos of people being like, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm here to show you around the Gran Turismo world experience. Uh, let's go to the cafe. And this guy's like, my name is Luca. <laughs> <laughs> I live on the second floor. I live upstairs from you. Yes, I think you've seen me before. Anyway, Lucas, the cafe owner, and he gives you these menus, which are like really di amazing looking rendered menus. And you open up the menu and the, each, the menu has car tasks that you have to do. And as you complete these menus, then it goes to like a cut scene where Renee or not Renee, uh, Luca tells you about each car and the history of the cars with like really beautiful montage panning shots over the cars and wh why they're important to automotive history, which is, I actually like that. I think it's just crazy. Like it's so full of itself and silly. There's no voice acting too. So it's all like RPG, like, brrr, brrr. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. It's really like, it seems like a 1997 CD-ROM game in a lot of ways. I don't know, but it's neat. And like, yeah, the graphics are crazy good. And uh, the cafes, like that part's fun. I'm, I'm enjoying it. But it does take, that means like everything takes forever because you got like these missions to do. Every, every menu has a different digitized person being like, hello, I'm Alphonse. I'm a Gran Turismo Premier League driver, uh, like a... Each of the, some of the best online racers, they in, introduce different levels of the license testing and sort of give you tips on passing the tests. And they, yeah, they're not real drivers; they're like you know the uh, esports pros, right? And yeah, they're giving you tips, but it's again, there's no speech in this game, so it's all just a digitized photo of someone smiling at you with text scrolling. <laughs> But I mean, if they're esports drivers, then presumably their fans like know what their voices are and things. I guess, but there's no voice acting in this game. That's weird. It really is. It's very strange. And also, sometimes at the cafe, different car designers will show up. Like this guy, the guy who designed the Miata, will show up and tell you stories about uh, how like some people get married with their Miata, or like the first time someone buys a Miata, they'll spend the night sleeping in it because they love it so much. He's... Uh, did they tell about how when you're like a super cool teen hacker and you go to the hacker convention? Mm -hmm. Uh, they'll give you whatever you want to come work for them, and so you can get on top of a table and start thrusting in the air going, I want a Miata, I want a Miata. I'm a big bad bionic boy. Uh-huh. Yes, it, it does have that. Uh, so yeah, I'm... Uh... Uh, so the actual gameplay is good. I, I'm just getting used to the controller, like, moving around and doing its thing. It's It's very unusual. Um... Other hot gaming news this week. Uh, I don't know if there's been there hadn't been any announcements really. No, not really. Um, everyone is just losing their mind over Elden Ring still. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little bit also over Horizon Forbidden West, which I started playing. Ooh, so you're playing both of these games. I'm playing both of the hottest games. And I feel like those eat. games could not be any more different. They're very different, uh, especially in the area of we're going there. Today's hottest hot button issue, accessibility. Mm -hmm. I have played... 
don't know, a fair amount of Elden Ring. I'm at like level 33 or something like that. I have friends to play it with. It's not a problem for me to advance in it if I want to. But I am really put off by the lack of accessibility options in that game. Mm -hmm. By which I don't just mean difficulty, but I also include difficulty as part of accessibility. Mm -hmm. And it became really clear to me when I popped in Forbidden West and on their main screen, like one of the first categories you can choose is accessibility and you can adjust everything. Mm -hmm. Like you can adjust the amount of time you have to hold down buttons if you have to hold down buttons at all. Uh, text size, visual cues, you can adjust the amount of time that things like slow down when you're aiming or zooming. You can adjust for colorblind issues, uh, subtitles, make them bigger, mm -hmm. make them smaller. You can even make it so that two controllers basically function as one controller. Mm -hmm. So you can have someone like sit next to you on the couch with a second controller and do the movement or anything else that you're not able to do with your controller. Mm -hmm. Which I think is wonderful. I liken it to uh, architecture. You know, in the United States at least, when you build a new building, you're required to include wheelchair ramps, doorways of a certain size, uh, elevators, depending on the size of the building, just ways to make sure that your building is accessible and usable mm -hmm. by as many different people as possible. And I think that that is a wonderful thing for games. Well, However, the, Elden, the Elden Ring is like yeah. when you go to an old castle that's like not a super popular one and it's got a tower you can climb up and it's got these like worn stone stairs with no railings that are like uh -huh. going up the side of the you know, spiraling up the side of the tower and it's the scariest thing you've ever done because it's so mm -hmm. high and you feel like you could fall at any second yeah i totally agree that it is and uh i don't think that's very cool <laughs> i've seen a lot of people on twitter being like well, it's part of the artistic vision of the game that it's super difficult. And, Which hmm, I these don't really games buy aren't that, that difficult. Argument. <laughs> They're mean, not that difficult, for one thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to diminish anyone who finds them difficult. Because yeah. that's totally legitimate. Not everyone has the same skill set. But if your artistic vision necessitates excluding people with differing abilities, I don't think that's a very good artistic vision. Mm. Um, there are plenty of... I totally get why like online multiplayer PvP games can't have difficulty sliders, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, although I think there are ways that you could do that, but... No, mm, like yeah. Street Fighter casual matches. Like, if I'm just playing a fighting game with my friends and they're much better than me, I can, like put up my handicap on it so that I can right. have a more competitive match. Yeah. Um, and, but for a single player game, I don't understand how making a game more accessible or even just easier mm -hmm. for a player takes away from someone else, mm. be it the developers or other players. And the only kind of way that I can think that it would is if you're a gamer who wants to play the game and then like brag about beating it and being like an elite kind of club. Well, like I often play Bioware games on, you know, harder difficulty levels because I like the challenge and it doesn't take away anything that Vanessa's playing it not on harder difficulty levels, you know? Right. Or because Matt. I think realize... Matt was playing it on easy. Yeah, I uh, for me, like combat is generally the least interesting part of an RPG to me. Okay, this trailer to for the new Batman movie keeps playing. And On what? Uh, IGN dot com. Uh huh. And it sure looks like 
the Riddler's handwriting looks so much like that Mr. Policeman, I gave you all the clues. <laughs> what if the Batman is a stealth Harry Hole movie? Is a what? Harry Hole was, of course, Michael Fassbender's name in that Mr. Policeman movie. F Pardon? Yeah, his name was Harry Hole. <laughs> oh, you know, I've been, uh, uh, I had a boyfriend once who wanted me to uh, wax, be and actually, never mind, I'm not going to make that joke. Uh, yeah, uh, wax under your armpits, I'm sure you meant. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, yeah. Michael Fassbender is Harry Hole in <laughs> The Batman. <laughs> Mr. Policeman, I gave you all the clues. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I see both. I don't know both sides of this, but I can see why. It's like, no, I we want to make a game that has these specific standards. They don't want to make a game that anyone can play. And... I, don't, I, I I think it kind of sucks, but also if you get on PC, you can patch in whatever accessibility mods you want. And the only person who gets mad about that are that one guy who's like, you've stolen from yourself. You've right. stolen. <laughs> you cheated the game. Yeah. You've cheated yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or you can. And of course, nobody we know would ever do this. Apparently, buy some runes on eBay. That's don't insane. Do this. I don't. You can. Yeah, be don't do banned. it. I, I, um, for a lot of reasons, like usually, like did it involve installing anything? Ha has have these people now got access to his bank accounts? Like I've just heard of so many horror stories from doing this kind of thing. Yeah, and by his you mean a theoretical oh, person. Oh yeah, a host Again, that may have know. no one I know bought nobody, a million. No runes off that of would be ebay crazy. that's oh, insane oh <laughs> so yeah there's th there's your accessibility option <laughs> uh yeah i i'm gonna i'm gonna hard disagree with you on this johnny i think that Stating like, oh, we want everyone to have the same experience presupposes that every player comes to the game with the same core motor functions right. and abilities. And that's just not true. Yeah. So if you want everyone to have an equitable experience, then you need to put accommodations for people with differing abilities. Right. And I guess they just don't care about that. They don't. Most people. People don't, to be honest. Like, I think most people don't think about accessibility in their lives until they or someone they care about is impacted. Right. Because why would you? Like, it's a big burden to walk around everywhere you go, be like, I'm walking into this restaurant. Would the door be wide enough to accommodate someone in a wheelchair? Mm -hmm. You know, is there a ramp? Mm -hmm. Is Are the tables put close enough together or far enough way yeah Are the racks in the store it i'm kind of surprised where... that game that for certification they aren't they don't have mandatory accessibility control you know because like platform holders can be like microsoft or sony can be like hey you need to have at least this this and this to make game release games and have them be yeah. certified for our system yeah, it's definitely a per-developer thing at the moment. Some things have become pretty universal, like subtitles. Um, but even then, a lot of games have issues where the subtitles are too small. You can't adjust the font size. You can't adjust the scroll speed, things like that. Um, I think that this is a huge overgeneralization, so maybe I shouldn't even say it, but it seems like the people I see focusing most on accessibility are more Western developers. So it might be that it just kind of hasn't reached out mm. to a lot of different places yet. Yeah. But there's disabled and just people with difficulty with motor difficulties and stuff in Japan, as well as everywhere else. Absolutely. And you know what? Like I admit freely, I like to play a game on story mode or easy because I am an adult and I don't have a lot of time to, you know, grind and grind and grind away. It's super boring. I find Elder Scrolls 
really boring. I'm sorry. I do. Uh, I get like the exploration and things like that, but Elder Scrolls? the idea. I'm sorry. What? Elden Ring. You love Elder, Elder Scrolls. Scrolls. I love Elder Scrolls. Elden Ring. Tedious. It gets tedious. I really enjoy it. <laughs> I do not have your same experience, Johnny. Mm-hmm. This is evidence that everyone comes to a game with different experiences. You know what? I also don't get like people are like, oh, my God, I beat this boss. It was such a rush. Blah, blah, blah. I don't get that either. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't feel a thrill when I defeat a difficult boss in a video game. Oh, the things that when, I, when, who, are... when I killed Rom, the whatever spider, that was incredible. Uh, we've been trying for like three weeks. <laughs> that was in Bloodborne. Yeah. Another one by the same de- developer. Yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. Like, it doesn't get my heart racing. Uh, the things that, like, excite and thrill me are exploration and character. And like interesting story, but the the combat stuff don't like it very much. I think that's not a totally unusual experience for female gamers. No, no, I, I definitely know a lot of people along those. Well, not just female, but like, yeah, one of my nerdiest gamer buddies only has one arm, and uh, yeah, still still plays games a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, that's my hot gaming news, accessibility. I'm not the only one talking about it. Our own friend of the show, Mark Dara, released a video recently about accessibility in games and the different ways that you can, as a developer, uh, include everyone in your gameplay experience. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, yeah, uh, let's see if there's any more. Oh, apparently, so, some cars... In Gran Turismo 7, can cost uh, above 4 million credits. You can get t- uh, 2 million credits for $20. So that means uh, some no. cars can cost, if you buy them with real money, $40 for one car. Ew. But but in the game's defense, and I'm not, not here being Game Defense League, it's not that hard to get credits. You can, you, like... A day, you can probably get that game in a day. It's just people who want to get it quick or get that uh, car in a day of doing big races. Yeah. You know, this kind of pay to win thing, it's not confined to games like Elder Scrolls or Gran Turismo. People pay to win in Animal Crossing. I have seen it happen in my own Mm. Animal Crossing community. You see, that's great. Like, Like, isn't that the point of the game to do these? but are we are you are are you uh gatekeeping are you like maybe you know they 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 have limited time and they're busy to, yeah. They, yeah they don't get a thrill from like finding each object themselves they want to pay to have them mm-hmm. it's fine it's just a different method of gameplay and i don't really have a problem with it i think if you're playing a single player game here okay Here's it. My ultimate take. Are you ready, Johnny? I'm ready. Every single player game should have a built-in god mode. Ooh. That's a hot take. It's the hottest of takes. You know, we could have literally recorded a whole episode. In the time that we have spent. It's been an hour. Talking about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Yes. Gran Turismo. Yes. And accessibility in video games. Yes. Well, I guess that means the episode's over. <laughs> well, I guess so. Oh, also, I uh, I leveled up. Uh, uh, I leveled up. I ordered two games off of Best Buy because I was like, oh, I wonder if they have a cheaper copy of um, Xenoblade Chronicles. And they did. So I got that and uh, for the Switch. I haven't played it yet. And I also got Theater Rhythm Curtain Call, the 3DS music game, rhythm game, where you play through old Final Fantasy songs, and it's wonderful. Oh, was that you? I saw that on our Facebook page, and I did not, like, clock that it was you that had posted yes. that you got it. Yes. It's, it's, I th- it's really cute. I think if you have a 3DS or a 2DS, uh, you should get it because it's uh, I mean, it's worth $15 for sure. 
It's got all those old songs and it has a million different ways to play. You can play it if you only have one hand, like it does have one hand mode. It does have uh, you can play it with the stylus. You can play it with buttons. Uh, there's difficulty settings, all that wonderful stuff. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love setting options. Mm -hmm. Let people choose for themselves the kind of game experience they want to have. Mm -hmm. Cheating yourself. You cheated the You're game. Cheating the game. <laughs> All right, listeners. Sorry we couldn't have a real episode today, but uh stay tuned for chapter two, uh well, most of chapter two of Final Fantasy Tactics next week. I did finish this chunker and a lot of things happen. There's reveals, there's unreveals, there's betrayals. It's mm -hmm. quite quite a shocking chunker. It's a complicated game. Bye. Bye.